Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Bullington and this is The Campfire. It's our weekly high school football show where we go around the Metroplex and preview everything you need to know about the upcoming season because it's never too early for football, right? Today, we take a look at small schools and private schools. Let's start things off by taking a glance at some of those teams in our film session. A lot has changed from last year in Class 4A. Gone is perennial powers, Argyle, Melissa, and Midlothian Heritage as they moved up, but there's still some power in 4A Division I. Defending state champions Stephenville may have graduated showstopper Koi Aiken, but they return quarterback Ryder Lambert and defensive newcomer of the year Camden McKinney. So look for the Yellow Jackets to make a run at back-to-back -back undefeated seasons. Salina moves up from Division 2 to 1 and should flex their muscles in District 7 4A behind Newcomer of the Year, Caden Morick. Kennedale should benefit again from playing in a Fort Worth ISD district as they get their running attack on point. In 4A Division 2, Aubrey proved to be tough competition behind quarterback Braylon Calgrove and may be the team to beat. If you want to look for the top dogs in 3A, all you have to do is check the last couple of years. Brock in Division 1 and Gunter in Division 2 should be the big favorites here yet again. In TAPS, we got some new head coaches in some of the area's top programs. Plano Prestonwood is now led by Donnie Yantis, and Nolan Catholic introduces KJ Williams as their new head coach. But they both will be chasing the three-time defending state champions at Parish Episcopal. The Panthers bring back an outstanding defense, and sophomore quarterback Sawyer Anderson could be scary good. In SPC, the Episcopal School of Dallas went 10-0 last year, but fell in the championship game. They bring back outstanding senior quarterback Patrick Burke, who should make a run at a title again. Should be some outstanding football played in the private school and lower classification ranks. Let's dig even deeper into these teams as we bring on our inside high school sports insider, Matt Dix, along with producer Ward Fasold for our district breakdown. All right, district breakdown time, and we have our new inside high school sports insider, Matt Diggs, with us. Diggs, let's jump right in because we got a lot to talk about. Let's talk about the private schools, and, and, and let's start off with TAPS with the uh, old Episcopal going for that four P. Yeah, I mean, Parish Episcopal, uh, I, I think right now they are a huge favorite. Now, with, with private schools, you know, you get move-ins and freshmen who can make a difference, so you never truly know uh, as we get closer to the season, maybe see some seven-on-seven -seven action. We might get a, a, a better glance if somebody is, is able to uh, compete with them, but I think Parish is by and far the favorite. Uh, when you got a quarterback as a freshman, Sawyer Anderson coming back, I mean, you start to have those equivalencies with Jonathan Gray and Rex Burkhead, uh, that kind of impact on this team, he is going to make a huge difference. Uh, already having a ring as a, as a freshman coming back as a sophomore will be better than ever. And they have that three time defending championship on their side, but they got other players coming back as well. They got Thomas Williams coming back, Daniel Demery coming back, Cooper Balin coming back, four other uh, players who made all state honorable mention are coming back. Let's talk about 3A over the last. Uh you know, four or five years, it's been Gunter, it's been Brock in the two separate divisions. Uh, is anything going to change there, do you think? Really, in looking at 3A, uh, it, it, it's going to be, we could, you could just replay what we talked about last year uh, with some different teams and different names, uh, and, and you're going to get a lot of the same thing because the gap between the haves and the have-nots in 3A is so big that it's going to take a special team to make it up to that top tier. All right, man, we'll talk to you next week. See you next week. You know, Dixie has much more to say about the private schools and lower classifications, right? Well, you're in luck because Wizzy and small school Dixie will have a longer district breakdown coming out this Thursday. Now let's take a look at some of the players on the rise in the private ranks. It's difficult to three-peat without a strong defense, and at Parish Episcopal, Daniel Dimery will be the clear leader on that side of the ball. The senior had five picks, two of which returned for touchdowns, and he returned a fumble for a score. 
Demery also made 70 tackles last year as he punishes ball carriers when he lays the wood. Daniel is also a menace in the return game as he brought a kickoff back for six last year as well. Demery has no shortage of D1 suitors and will wait on making his college decision. Perhaps overlooked in the area, Eno Etta is not a secret to college recruiters. The defensive lineman from Covenant Christian Academy opened many eyes last year when he recorded 22 and a half sacks in just 11 games. Wow. For his high school career, he already has 42 sacks and has many D1 offers, including Michigan State and others. At a six foot four and 260 pounds with an 81 inch wingspan, that just gobbles up quarterbacks. Staying on the defense, Carter Stoutmeyer is a lockdown defensive back for the Plano Prestonwood Lions. Carter is the son of Omar Stoutmeyer, who played 10 years in the NFL as a safety, and it looks as though the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Last year, Stoutmeyer had two picks and returned one for a touchdown for Preston Wood. As with most dominant corners, opposing quarterbacks stay away from his side of the field, but he's impressed scouts as he too has many D1 offers. Keep an eye on those guys for sure. Not only do we have great players in the area, but great coaches as well. Our Ward Fasold caught up with Salina head coach Bill Elliott as they talk about the Bobcats move up to 4A Division I and much, much more in our Media Day segment. All right, Media Day, and we are joined by Bill Elliott from Salina. We all know him from 4A Division II, but we're talking Division I now. Let's start off by talking. Uh, what do you? How do you feel about moving up a, d a division? And just when you move up, all the some of the big players they move up as well. So you're not going to see the Argyles and Heritages and, and Melissas. But talk about getting up to Division One, there, Coach. Uh, you know, we knew it's coming. I mean, our our community is growing so fast. And we're in this corridor coming up the toll road, in Frisco and Prosper, and, and you know it's inevitable. I and mean, we're going to be one of the largest uh, suburbs, the Metroplex. They're talking four to five hundred thousand people eventually in Salina. So we've been anticipating this. You know, I've been in Salina 30 years now. And so you know, I was here when we had 150 kids in high school. And now we've got a little over a thousand kids in high school. So I've seen the growth and it, it's, it's great. I mean, there's good and bad about it. You know, you want to hold on. Our biggest thing is trying to hold on to our culture, our traditions of who we are, who we've been as that growth comes. And, and uh, that's our big challenge right now, but we're excited about moving up uh, to D1, get to play some different schools. That's always good. Uh, I always feel like it's at our advantage to play schools that we've never played before. And so there'll be some schools in there that we haven't played in a long time. And that'll be a great thing. And there's some great matchups in there now with, you know, China Springs and Stephenville being our region, Waco, La Vega. I mean, there's going to be some, there's some dudes right there that have to play. So it's going to be a, a great time once we get the playoffs. You're going to have some games where it's not going to be as competitive as you'd like. How important is it for you to put together a non-district and you've probably already done it that, that test you right away. So, you know, when it comes to after game 10, you're ready for that playoff run. Yes, yeah, definitely. You know, it's, it's different. There's some schools in that district we've never played before. Uh, yeah, I was very surprised when we, were, we ended up uh, getting put into, into the district we were. I really thought we'd go east, uh, you know, with Anna and Paris and uh, Silver Springs and go that way. And so it really shocked me the way they, they put us. But it is what it is. That's what UIL does. And they've got reasons for doing things. And, you know, it's going to be good. There's going to be some great things about it, too. You know, I think it's going to be a cool matchup with Dallas Carter. Two legendary programs, you know, Salina and Dallas Carter. I've tried to get that game in the past as a preseason game because I just think it'd be, it just sounds cool, you know, to get to play Dallas Carter. Well, I appreciate you joining us, and good luck the rest of the way, Coach. Thanks, Ward. I appreciate it, man. Great to have a great day. Wow. Coach Elliott has been a part of Salina football for 30 years. That's so impressive. We will post the entire interview on our social media later this week. That's going to do it for this week's show. Next week, we start diving into individual districts and we start with three 5A Division I, which thanks to realignment, will have perennial powers, Alito and Dent Ryan in the same district. I cannot wait for that one. You can keep up with everything on Inside High School Sports by following our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram accounts. Until next time, I'm Asha Billington and thank you so much for watching The Campfire.